Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here. And today I am back on some Neo 2 and I want to show off my brand new dual sword build. I've always been a big fan of dual swords just because they have like everything going for them. They do a lot of damage. They're extremely tanky. They're really fast too, which in Neo 2 is a bigger deal just because you can actually get Amarita life absorption. And because of that, with the extraction talisman, you can heal yourself like crazy with dual swords. So they are really, really good. And I knew I wanted to make a build. Now, one of the problems with dual swords is that it has some of the most powerful moves in the game. And because of that, you tend to kind of find yourself using those really powerful moves. And then you kind of forget about everything else. And that's kind of what this build is. This is really a two move build. I'm using Windstorm and Sign of the Cross. Those are like my two main moves I'm using. Water Sword is also extremely powerful. In fact, it's probably better for taking out bosses. But with Water Sword, I don't really like it as much as Windstorm for everything else. I think Windstorm is just way better for just taking out normal enemies. And it is also very good for taking out bosses. Now, Patch 1.9 came out. And with that, we got a bunch of new missions, mainly Boss Rush missions. This is one of those missions. I am not level synced right now. At the end of the video, I will do a Twilight mission where I will be level synced if you're curious about that. And because I like to go into great details on my builds, I will be putting timestamps in the description and I will pin a comment if you want to just skip around. That's perfectly fine. So now we're going to buff and then I'm going to destroy every single one of the Dojo Masters. That's what this mission is. And it's really great for farming for loot. And there's a lot of smithing techs you could probably get from this mission. Now, I am using these traps, the poison traps, but normally I don't really use them. But against humans, they work out really, really great, especially on this mission, because all you got to do is just put one down right there. And now the boss is going to land into the trap, get poisoned right away. And yeah, one windstorm or even one sign of the cross normally could just flat out kill these guys. So it's really crazy. And we're going to do it again. Now I'm going to go ahead and buff up again with rage. Now this guy is kind of annoying because he likes to jump around a lot. But got lucky with RNG there where he didn't jump out of my trap right away. And here we go again. I think we're almost done. Yeah, I think there's only two left, so... I mean, look at all the loot you can get off of this. It's pretty crazy. And now, one more, and we are done. So, we just need to wait for the girl to spawn. And she always takes, like, a lot longer than the other enemies, for some reason. And there you go. Every one of them got killed there with one windstorm. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So yeah, this build is really, really consistent, very good. Works great against humans, works great against yokai. But now I'm going to go over everything you need to know about this build and show you exactly how it works. Alrighty, well I'm back in the menus now, and the first thing I want to talk about is actually how to just set up the poison build. If you're going to do a poison build, this is kind of universal. This is what I would recommend to set it up. Depending on whatever weapon you're using, you can always change your armor and your weapons because you're going for different set bonuses. But in terms of setting up a poison build, I think this is what you want to be using generally. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the accessories. Now on my Azakani, I have Life, Recovery, Amarita Absorption. First of all, you should definitely have that on both of your accessories and your chest piece because it's extremely good. Especially with the Extraction Talisman, you're constantly healing. Now, if you have a fast swinging weapon like dual swords, tomfas, kuragama, whatever it might be, you are going to be recovering a lot of life because of that. But when it comes to the poison setup, you definitely want to have melee damage versus poison enemy, and you want to have poison accumulation on both of the accessories. Now, the final slot there, that can be luck, it can be magic power, it can really be whatever you want, but I personally just prefer magic power. You can also put ninja power on there if you want. The higher your ninja power, the more consistent your poison is going to be. So, like, if you have a really high ninja power, you could probably apply poison on, like, every enemy with one poison shuriken, no problem. Where there are some enemies where it might take me two poison shurikens to apply the poison, but that normally doesn't bother me all that much. 
I definitely like magic power because I want my buffs to have as much duration as possible. And I just hate constantly having to rebuff or not having the buffs to begin with. I just hate it. Now, it's the same deal with the other accessory, which in this case is a Magatama. Life recovery, very important. Poison accumulation, melee damage versus poison enemy, and I have magic power on this. Now, for your spirit and your yokai abilities, this is also really important. You want to use the snake. The snake is actually overpowered. It just is. It's a really good yokai ability for damage and key damage, but also it gives you 17% melee damage versus poison enemy. So yeah, this thing is amazing. And then also the Toxic Slime Soul Core is really good. It's good because it gives you 10% poison accumulation, which is nice. But the main reason why it's good is because you can actually use it as an ability to help you apply poison. So if you are running around using poison shurikens, throwing poison bombs, let's say you're running low on them or you just want to apply poison quickly with a soul core, you can do that with this soul core. It's really consistent. Now, my other soul core I have on is this one just because I like the damage taken or at least the minus damage taken mid attack. I think that's really good. There are other options if you want to use it, but I really do like that minus 10% damage taken when I'm doing an attack because I'm always doing an attack. That's just the truth. And then the final thing that you could put poison accumulation on is your weapon. Definitely put that on your weapon. With all of this poison accumulation, I believe it's like 50%. You're able, even with a really low dexterity, a low amount, of Nijishu power, you're able to poison most enemies with just one poison shuriken. If you're using like the poison traps, you should poison them like instantly. If you're using the poison bombs, normally you'll probably get your poison off. But with the shurikens, you can have up to 10 of them equipped, and I like to use them a lot. I like to poison anything that's like somewhat powerful or strong, especially in co-op. And I like to try to get the most bang for my buck out of it, so I like to try to poison them with one shuriken if possible. There are always going to be some enemies that are going to resist it, and some enemies that can't be poisoned at all. But for the most part, with all this poison accumulation, I can poison almost everything with one poison shuriken. Now, if you want to see the rest of my stats, you can go right ahead. I have the attack bonus, heart A+, plus on there. I have 99 heart, so that's something. But I also have 99 skill, so I remodeled this. I did the double remodel for heart and skill, so I have an A- in heart and an A- in skill. That's something I didn't actually know about for the longest time. And that is just because I never really thought to even play around with it. People pointed that out to me in the comments. So thank you to anyone who did that because that was very, very helpful because I did not know about that. Now I also have on the Obsidian Knight's Axe. And that's really just because with the Yazakani, we can get that rage duration and we can give ourselves rage. Rage is actually like... One of the most powerful buffs in the entire game. You get more damage from Rage than you do from the Carnage Talisman. That is crazy. Because the downside, which is you use more key when you attack, really isn't that big of a downside. It's really not a problem. So yeah, this is amazing. I wish you could have even more duration. It's kind of annoying having to constantly reapply the Rage bonus. But still, it's really, really powerful. And I definitely recommend using this if you have the room for it on your build now one thing i didn't actually bring up is the fact that i'm using the master swordsman set i'm using this because i like the sign of the cross damage i like everything on it but i also like that 40 extra damage for dual swords i've done a lot of testing with this build trying out different like sets i've tried obsidian i've tried out the moon prayer set which is the seven misfortunes where you actually apply a bunch of debuffs on yourself and then you get more damage i've tried it all and honestly, I think that the Master Swordsman set is the most consistent damage you can get. So this is the one I would probably recommend. Plus, it's heavy armor. It's going to give you more toughness and pretty decent defense. It's actually fairly light for a heavy armor. So overall, I think that this is probably the best set for dual swords. Now, I am using two pieces, though, of the Moon Prayer set, which is the Seven Misfortune H Hardships. Because if you actually can get another piece on there, you can get a damage bonus of A+, plus when you will have a status effect on you. That includes the Carnage Talisman, the Rage debuff that you get, and any other debuff that you can have on you. So it can add up to be really good damage, but normally I would say 
Most people, if they're going to use that, is going to use Rage as a debuff and maybe the Carnage Talisman as a debuff. And even with all that, it did not hit harder than the Master Swordsman set. So I just personally think the Master Swordsman set is better. But with three-piece bonus, you can actually get 5% melee damage, which is a decent amount of melee damage. It actually adds just a little bit more. It's not, like, insane, but it does add some more. So, like, I like it for that. Now, initially, I was using something different. I was actually using the Oni set. And what this does is that this will actually give you, with three-piece bonus, it gives you the minus 10% damage taken while you're attacking. Initially, I was planning on maybe doing Water Sword, which if you're going to do Water Sword, which is another insanely powerful move for the Dual Swords, if you're going to use that, I would say you probably want to have as much damage taken or at least minus percentage of damage taken while you're attacking because you're just attacking like crazy. And if you get hit, it's just, you know, kind of annoying. One of the problems with Water Sword is that the range of it isn't that great. And if you get hit while you're doing it, you're going to get stunned out of it. You don't have, like, insane poise with Water Sword. Same with any of these moves. Sign of the Cross, or if you're talking about Windstorm, whatever it might be, you don't have, like, insane poise or toughness while you're doing it. So if you get hit, you're going to get stunned. So I like Windstorm just because it's really quick. It does a lot of damage. It has really good range on it because of the little wind effect it does. It's a very, very powerful move. Now, if you want to take a look at everything I have on here for my armor, there you go. It's pretty much the same on every piece, so let me just kind of scroll through. The life recovery on the chest pieces there, I have the damage taken critical, and I have luck and attack on every piece. Those were orange inheritables. I have to kind of talk about this just because a lot of people always ask, like, well, how do you get luck on your chest piece, or how do you get attack on your chest piece? Well, that's how you do it. You collect some orange inheritables. And then once you have those, you max out the familiarity, and then you put them on your armor. It's very easy to farm for them at this point, because there are a lot of missions where people are dropping a crap ton of them, so it's pretty easy to find them at this point. Now, the harder thing to find would be whatever skill you want to buff. And in this case, I am buffing Windstorm, so I have that on every single piece. Now, I actually got hooked up by a friend who gave me the gauntlets for Windstorm, but you can find them from random revenants. But if you can't find them, because it is kind of a long shot to actually find what you're looking for if you're farming revenants, there are discords that you can join. There's Reddit-like posts that you can like put out there. There's communities. There's a lot of ways to ask people, can they hook you up? And most people are willing to generally drop a grave for you so you can farm that grave. So that is something I want to point out. So if you want to get Windstorm damage or any skill damage, just join one of those communities or Discord or Reddit or whatever and ask. And somebody might actually hook you up. People are generally really friendly like that. Okay, so here's the belt if you want to see what I have on there. I mean, like I said, most everything is the same. There's only like slight differences on like everything. But that is pretty much all of my armor. Now, let me just quickly show you the weapons. So... I do actually use the bow and the rifle and, you know, same kind of deal, kind of the same on what they have. The main thing there is the damage bonus agility. It does actually add a little bit of damage for you. I have familiarity bonus on this one just because if I ever do need to max out familiarity, I just like equip this and have this on so I get a little bit of a bonus because maxing out familiarity can be very annoying, especially if you're not using glue. Now, let's actually talk about my magic and my ninja abilities. Alrighty, so for the poison, like I said, I like the poison shurikens. That's the main thing I like to use, but also the bombs. I try to have four bombs, ten poison shurikens. So I have a 20 capacity. That's where I leave it, just because that allows me to have the ten shurikens and the four bombs. Now, another option, by the way, is you could use poison arrows. These are actually pretty decent. So if you want more poison on your build, you can maybe get your dexterity up a little bit more to equip maybe one poison arrow. It has a good duration on it. It's really good for applying poison on humans. and It's just nice. So this is another option for more poison if you want it. But like I said, if you're farming like humans in general, like just a mission where there's a bunch of humans, I really do like the toxic ground fire just because it applies to poison almost instantly so it's really really good but that's what i use for my ninja now let's talk about my magic 
I always like to have Luckbringer just for farming. I don't equip it though. I just leave it off and I go into the menu whenever I want to use it. Mainly, of course, for bosses and stuff. But it is really nice. It's nice to have, so I recommend it. I use two extraction talismans, mainly because I have a high magic power. So the duration of this is really, really long. The higher your magic power, the longer this lasts. It lasts for a very long time. And then I have three steel talismans. The duration on these are really long as well. Not as long as the extraction or luck bringer, but it's kind of close. So I like to have three just because I always want to have it if possible. But hey, it gives you some extra defense and that's just really nice. And I also have the barrier talisman on. I have four of these. And rejuvenation talisman. I have four of these. And I think that's it. Nope, I have the weakness talisman. I'm using three of these because there are now a bunch of missions that you might be doing through co-op or you're farming it yourself. And there's actually three bosses in these missions. So I like to have three because of that. Now, the higher your magic power, by the way, if you're in co-op, you will be able to apply your weakness talisman to the bosses with just one talisman. That's one thing that always bugs me. If you have a lower magic power, let's say you only have 30 magic, it's going to cost you two sloth talismans or two weakness talismans to apply it to a boss. And it's something I notice all the time. People are using weakness or they're using sloth and they're not applying it to the boss because maybe you're in a Tory gate and the boss just will resist it. Or you do apply it and it wears off in like five seconds. I've seen that all the time. So that's one of the reasons I really like to have a higher magic stat so I can have more magic power so I can actually apply weakness or sloth and actually have it last a long time and it only will cost me one talisman to apply it to like every enemy so that's why I like it so much now by the way one thing I will say when I talk about my stats in general is that you can lower your magic stat really low maybe put more points into courage and if you did that then what you could do is you can actually just drop the rejuvenation talisman, you could drop the barrier talisman, and honestly, at that point, I would just be using steel and extraction. Extraction's so good, you just want to, like, use it. Maybe you can have Luckbringer, but you don't have to have it. But you can have a pretty low magic stat, and you can actually just use extraction as your buff. Let's say you just hate buffing. I know some people do. I kind of do, even though I always buff. I kind of hate buffing at times, so... The less things you have to buff yourself, the better in that case. But if you're going to do that, I would say that you definitely want to have higher courage. That way you can actually have some good key recovery. And you might even want to use some sacred water to actually allow you to be able to have good key recovery. I think that's a very important thing. So Barrier Talisman, I think it's the best buff in the game. It just has like somewhat of a short duration. But when you have a higher magic power, the duration is actually pretty good for the most part. And rejuvenation as well is really, really good. It really helps you stay at full health. And when I talk about the clan and stuff, that's just something that's actually important. Now, real quick, let me actually talk about something else because I kind of forgot to bring this up. And that is, I want to talk about what missions should you actually try to farm if you're looking for inheritables? Because, you know, this is something people always ask as well. Well, one mission is Dark Omens. This is in Region 1. And this mission is where a lot of people are now trading. So a lot of times if you go to one of these like communities or Discord or Reddit or whatever, you will actually notice a lot of people are trading here in Dark Omens, probably just because it's in Region 1. So like the moment you get to New Game Plus, you can just come here and trade or get stuff from people. So that is something I've noticed. But it's a good spot to go if you're looking for some loot. And then in Region 4, there's another really good mission, which is the Missing Gun. A lot of people are trading here too. So if you're looking for a lot of revenants to farm, these two missions, in my opinion, are probably the best ones right now in the game because you can find a lot of crazy stuff there. And especially the Orange Inheritables, you'll have no problem finding Orange Inheritables in these two missions. But if you're looking for like particular skills, you can find them in these missions, but obviously you have no control over that. You don't know if you're going to find it or not. Now, I will actually make an offer. Anyone who wants to hit me up, I will put my PSN in the timestamp comment and in the description. But it is Jumpin' Production without an S, just like my YouTube name. That's my PSN. If you want to hit me up for the Windstorm gauntlets, 
go right ahead. And if you have any gauntlets you might want to give me, I normally am down to like take gauntlets, but message me. I would appreciate that. Like just tell me like, hey, you know, I'm trying to get some Windstorm gauntlets. I want to copy your build. And if I see that, if I'm on, I'll try to hook you up. So I will make that offer to anyone who wants to maybe get the Windstorm gauntlets. I have some I can give away. Not a problem at all. All right. So now let me actually talk about one other thing I kind of forgot to talk about, which is the way I remodel all of this, by the way. I did not remodel my armor with this build. I didn't add like the refined option to make it so they require more stats. And I did not add the weight option there either, or the reinforced option. I didn't do either of those. That's because I want to use less of my stats for maxing out stamina or just maxing out strength for constitution, whatever. I don't want to waste stats so what i decided to do was to not reinforce it at all it has the standard remodel on all of my armor if you are interested in that now let's actually talk about the guardian spirit we're using 10g best guardian spirit in the game that's it i don't really have to say anything else i already talked about the soul chorus but yeah use this especially on dual swords because dual sword is such a good high stance weapon you have windstorm in high stance you have water sword in high stance it's really really good so 10g is the way to go there's really nothing better they added this one in by the way this is new and yeah unfortunately it's not very good i wish they actually had another one that's just amazing all right now for my secondary spirit though i am using this one just for the 10 toughness normally i would say or recommend to actually use this one for the damage taken mid attack. I really like this one. But I don't have the stats for that. Here's another thing. If you do decide to say. You know what. I don't want to use so much magic. I don't like buffing at all. And you're just using extraction. Maybe you're using steel or whatever. That's your only buff. Then if you put the points into courage. You can put this on for your secondary spirit. Which is something I would potentially recommend to people. Now let's go in and talk about my stats. I have seven constitution. That is just for the moon prayer armor. I have to have that on there. I have 99 heart. Heart is amazing. Gives you key, which is great. And of course, it will boost my damage for my weapon. I have nine courage. Now, courage is your key recovery. But in my personal opinion, if you're using the barrier talisman, I just don't really see the point of putting more points in there. But like I said, if you don't want to use magic as buffs and stuff you want to have a lower magic stat you can dramatically lower your magic stat and put a lot of points into courage if that's something you want to do i would say like 40 courage is more than enough to actually be able to have pretty decent key recovery so that is something i would definitely say i have 41 stamina and nine strength the strength is i think i have to have eight strength for the master swordsman set and then the 41 stamina is to be able to be in the b agility range 99 skill because that's for my damage 15 dexterity that is just to be able to actually equip all of my ninja stuff i wanted to equip my 10 poison shurikens and my four poison bombs and then i have 63 magic which will give me a crap ton of magic power speaking of which my magic power is actually 551 and i have 257 ninja power people will generally ask like okay you know What's going on with the magic power? It's higher than what I can get it. Well, one reason that might happen is because of titles. I have all my titles maxed out, and I have ninja and magic power is being boosted by titles. So that's just giving me more. And if I do have this much magic power, I've noticed that I'm able to apply my weakness talisman to bosses with one talisman. It has a good duration to it. My buffs have a really good duration to them. I definitely like to have a very high magic power if possible. And my luck is 122, if you're curious about that. And let's actually now talk about the clan I'm in. Because I actually made a video about this, which is kind of funny. Because I called it, which I said that I thought Honda was actually going to become the top clan. Which it has! It's actually dominating right now every other clan. I seen this coming. I knew that people who were maxing out their level, they were level 300, were leaving the other clans and joining Honda. And now Honda is winning because of that. So that's really, really cool. 
The main thing about Honda is that you get that damage taken half if you're at full health. If you have life recovery and marina absorption, plus if you're using rejuvenation talisman, you're having that effect kick in all the time. It is super good. Plus, and this is still crazy to me, you get 28% active skill damage. So Windstorm, Sign of the Cross, all of that being, is being buffed by 28%. That is so crazy because it starts off at 4%. So you get a plus 24% once your clan will max out, which will happen, I guess, once you reach the elder status in the clan is when you will max out your stats. But yeah, man, 80% chance of taking half the damage when you're at full health and also 28% active skill damage. It's pretty freaking crazy. Now, there's one last thing I guess I should talk about, which is just the skill customization. Honestly, if you're wondering what I'm using for Sign of the Cross, I'm just boosting the damage by 5% due to my heart stat. If you have 99 in your stats and you put on one of these damage boost ones, it will only give you 5% bonus damage. But it's better than nothing. So I have that on Sign of the Cross. And on Windstorm, I have my damage being boosted by skill. Same thing as before. It's a 5% boost, but it's better than nothing. I wouldn't really recommend using like Raging Strike. That's like a 20% boost, but it's going to drain your health instantly. Plus, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the Honda effect. And there's a couple other ones, like there's one for 10% bonus damage, but then you can't key pulse. I don't like that because I normally like to use Windstorm, and then I'll use Sign of the Cross. That's something I do all the time, so I want to be able to key pulse because of that. Plus, you do get a nice damage bonus when you key pulse if you do it the right way, so that's another thing. And then there's another one that can give you 5% damage and then 5% key damage, but you lose any type of like buff you might have on your weapon. That one's okay, just because I'm not using a weapon buff with this build, but if you do get a weapon buff, let's say you kill one of the floating heads, then you're losing damage. Like if you have a floating head buff, then you can actually get some bonus damage. So I just personally think that the 5% that you get from using the skill damage boost is better than pretty much all the rest in most cases. Now, I guess I should also talk about the skills themselves for the dual swords. Mainly, I'm using Windstorm, I'm using Sign of the Cross, and these are my main moves I'm using. So because of that, I am really not investing a lot of points into anything else. My Grandmaster skill, if you're wondering, is Firm Resolve. You know, this is one thing about dual swords. This is a really good Grandmaster skill because it gives you defense whenever you're attacking and you're always attacking. So like you pretty much always have this going and it's just really nice. Dual swords are very tanky and I like that about them. Now everything else is passives for the most part. Like I don't fully commit to this one because I don't really see the point of the 1%, but I go down to the 2%. So it's a 5% bonus damage if I'm hitting enemies in the back. This one I do fully commit because I'm always at full health because of rejuvenation, because of life recovery and marine absorption. So this is a 6% buff. And this is also, you know, nice. If the enemy is at full health, they take 12% more damage. So, I mean, that's actually really nice. That's one nice thing about dual swords as well. They get these Taki arts. So if you're using Windstorm, whatever, like you're going to do a lot of damage to a fully healthed enemy. I do get some bonus key, so it's like 50 bonus key. And I think that's it. I don't go for anything else. I don't bother with the grapple damage or the final blow damage. And instead, I just throw a crap ton of points into melee mastery. I believe I have 14 points into it right now. So it gives me like 28 extra damage. I'll take it. Why not? Because I am primarily just using the two skills. But if you want to use different skills, maybe some low stance skills, maybe some mid stance skills, go right ahead. You can play however you want. The thing about dual swords, I'll be honest, is that things like Windstorm and Water Sword are so strong that if you actually have a build around them, you can literally just run around and one-shot most enemies, no problem, by using those moves. And that's kind of a problem, you know, maybe it's boring, but it is pretty overpowered and you tend to just kind of fall into that trap. So that is something. But if you want to, like, play around with a lot of different moves, you can do so, it's fine. And remember, if you want to hit me up, if you're looking for maybe Water Sword Gauntlets or Windstorm Gauntlets, I'm always willing to drop my grave if I have the time to do so. 
just hit me up and I will definitely do that for you. Alrighty, well, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Now I am going to go into a Twilight mission and run around killing the normal enemies. Plus there's a boss at the end and it will level sync me. So you can see this build when it's level synced versus normal enemies and versus the boss at the end of the mission. It's a short mission. Luckily today there is a short mission, so it's not going to be too long. But you can actually see how this build will perform against normal enemies and when it's level synced. Alrighty, well, this is the Defile Sanctuary Twilight Mission. It's probably my favorite one just because it's the shortest one, to be honest. But, you know, one thing I wanted to actually bring up, I didn't really get to show this in the beginning gameplay, and this really applies mainly to Tory Gate Co-op, because if you're doing like a Tory Gate Co-op, or at least an expedition, the enemies are going to be stronger if you're doing Co-op. That's just the way it is. So Windstorm might not one-shot every enemy. So the question is, what do you do if you do not one-shot the enemy? Well, I mean, first of all, you can always just spam Windstorm. That's one of the nice things about it. Or you can actually just do a perfect key pulse and use it again if you don't want to just spam it. What I like to do is I actually like to do Sign of the Cross because Sign of the Cross is actually extremely powerful. And the moment that your key starts to recover, you can go into it right away. Or you can do a perfect key pulse if that's something you want to do. And if you have like the ultimate sign of the cross, you have a follow-up attack. It's a really powerful attack. So that's one of the things I really like to do. And that's one of the things I would recommend. The only problem is, is that you can be stunned out of it. So that's the one downside to EI Quick Draw or Sign of the Cross, is that if you're going into it, if you get hit, you're probably going to get stunned out of it, which is just kind of annoying, I'll be honest. Now, my buffs should last this entire mission outside of my barrier or rejuvenation, just because they have a shorter duration. But they're going to last a really, really long time. It's going to be an enemy that spawns over here. Let's take him out. Now, this is another enemy. It's going to take two poison shurikens to take her out or to poison her, and then one windstorm to take her out. Honestly, with this mission, until I get to the boss, I think that's going to be the only time I'm going to actually have to use Sign of the Cross, because all these other enemies should die in one hit. No problem. All right, let's take him out. Now we have a fan. I hate fans so much. Stupidly annoying. But there we go. And we're going to have a couple other enemies to deal with here. I basically know all the spawns, so I can just camp them. Watch out, because this guy likes to drop kick me a lot, which is always annoying. And I didn't kill him with one windstorm there, but the poison got him for me, so that's pretty cool. Now, let's actually go ahead and run up here. Now, I do like to actually collect soul cores as well. I didn't pick up the one right there, but, you know, at any point, you can use your toxic slime to help you poison enemies. And that actually is like more powerful poison than your poison shuriken. I've noticed that enemies I normally have to use two poison shurikens on, I can poison them with one toxic slime attack. Now these guys cannot be poisoned, any of the snake enemies cannot, but it doesn't matter because these guys are actually fairly weak and I'm able to just take them out regardless. Now we're gonna wait for the boss to spawn. And let's hit her with weakness, poison, and of course she's going to move around a whole bunch. So let's use sign of the cross, and that took her out. And here's the thing, I don't know if you could see it there, but sign of the cross can do just as much damage against the boss as Windstorm. It's that powerful, so I like it a lot. Alrighty guys, well that's going to do it for this video. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and that this has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me. Be sure to subscribe for future Neo 2 content. The DLC is actually going to be coming out on July 30th, which kind of is a bummer because that's actually like two months away at this point. But it makes sense with what's going on in the world right now, so that is something. But be sure to click the notification bell if you want to stay notified because if you don't click that bell, you won't get any notifications. So click the bell. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace out.